welcome to lecture 59. In the last lecture, we discussed uh, the good, good practices, best practices, few of the examples so that you can get some idea that what could be way forward for making urban governance and management a better practice. Today, in the verge of the completion of the course in the 59th lecture, we will discuss about the reflective learning and the excellence. And we have already discussed about the capacity building training and learning in some of the modules earlier in some weeks, but still we have kept this particular session on reflective learning and excellence because I felt that uh, some of the principles of reflective learning will uh, make you equipped with um, tools and methods uh, for the continuous learning and continuous excellence. So, in today's lecture, I will be discussing that why continuous learning is important and how it is related to excellence. Then we will discuss about the reflective learning, what is reflective learning and what could be the methods and, and tools for the reflective learning, how it can help you. Some of the initiative by the government of India in reflective learning and what could be your role. So, let us start with the continuous learning. Now, why continuous learning and excellence is important? Now, learning is a event which takes place and it can take place at any time. Sometimes we do the uh, degree level studies, school level studies or post graduate level studies. So, based on that we become deputed or we got the employment, we do our job. But after that, when we do our job at the profession for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, the technology changes and there are a lot of other changes which happens which makes us inevitable to change ourselves in terms of their our knowledge, skill and attitude towards our profession. So, if we take this word changes, uh, there are many changes which happen concurrently, changes. So, one is technological changes, for example, Please recall your uh, uh, our transactions during the offline period. Now we do all the transactions mostly on the online and the uh, e-platform. So that time uh, the transaction was completely different. And after this telecommunication and internet platform has come, now we do all the transactions on online platform the whole knowledge, skills and attitude towards the business, towards the transaction has changed. So, with this the governance as we discussed earlier as e-governance also emer emerge. And as the e-governance it satisfied the, the areas of urban infrastructure and also basic services basic services given by the urban local bodies. Now, apart from the technological change, there are the changes in the policy. Now, why policy change? Policy can change if there is a significant change in the international scenario, if there is a significant change in the political setup or social setup, there could be policy change. And because of the policy change, it leads to multiple reforms at the government level and we have talked already several reforms and because of the reforms we need to change, we need to learn new things. And also in the financial sector, the earlier paradigm as I told before also to provide some grant, to provide some loan and now the paradigm for the urban development is to facilitate the development. So, government is trying to facilitate the development by enabling uh, better legislation, by enabling better method procedures including e-governance so that the urban local bodies and development authorities they can perform in a better way. So, in the financial sector the transition from the provision, provisions to facilitation is important. So, in this facilitation paradigm equipped getting equipped with knowledge and skill for the urban local bodies and development authorities are important, but it is only possible if you can generate your own resources. We had long discussions 
uh, in one particular week about the resources and finances. So, this changes which happened in last, last 20 or 30 years where municipalities and urban development authorities they are now uh, it is essential to earn their uh, own resources and revenues to run the basic services and the urban infrastructure. For that it is essential knowledge which is required to know um, how to earn revenue. And as with this I should mention one more thing that with this paradigm it comes about a competitive. Since the resources are limited at the government level at the at the other levels. So, to get the resources by the urban local bodies and the development authorities it has become a competitive situation and every urban local body they are trying to get the funding based on the merit. So, since it is competitive the knowledge is knowledge is something which matters a most to get the project to get the funding for the service delivery at your local uh, level. So, technological change, policy change, financial change and also and also there could be changes like like organizational organizational change you know very well that in organize in uh, in um, after the 74th amendment act and after the municipal acts in every states are enacted the local bodies are now local governments and local governments they have the roles responsibility and mandate to provide the basic urban services um, uh, to the citizens of um, India. Now, this organizational change brought the new mandate and new responsibility at the local level also. So, you need to get the adequate knowledge and, and, and skills. Now, why this existing knowledge and existing skills are not sufficient? Because since I have told you that it, it has brought some competitive scenario in this competitive scenario the, the traditional work or traditional practices of the urban government may fail because the urban sector is also uh, becoming more and more complex more and more difficult to manage. So, you need to learn from the better practice practices and best practices that is why we are discussing about the continuous learning whatever you have learned in 2000 the, those could be could be defunct in 2018 and maybe whatever you are discussing in 2018 after to the some time 2030 it could be defined or uh, uh, lack of use of that knowledge. So, it is important and essential to upgrade your knowledge and skill continuously. Now, question is is it a uh, is it a concern for the organization or it is a concern for yourself as a as a particular now i start with that concern that it is the concern for yourself because as an urban manager you are working at the municipal body or the local level or other organization unless you upgrade your knowledge and skill continuously after some time you you will be poor in terms of knowledge and in 21st century it is the knowledge poverty which matters most not the money poverty or not the financial poverty. So, if you have the knowledge you can take the lead from the municipality, you can excel in the municipality, you can contribute for your organization, your organization can grow, you can grow. So, it is the knowledge wealth which can sustain yourself and your organization and that can bring the excellence. So, excellence is not a destination, excellence is a journey. So, you have to make a habit of making excellence through continuous learning. So, having said that let me discuss with you that what is uh, reflective learning. Now, we have talked about the learning and we talked earlier that in learning there are three components one is knowledge, skill and attitude. And so, this triangle we discussed now if you if you please follow the term knowledge what is knowledge? Knowledge is consisting of norms, theory, principles and also experiences. Now, norms, theory and principles 
there are some works and there are some existing norms, existing theory, existing principles, existing mandates which we follow for urban development and urban governance. But what about the experiences? Have we uh, developed or have we collected enough experiences from the urban sector? Probably not. So, that is why we need to learn from the experiences of the other. For medical science, a drug takes multiple years, uh, at least one decade to apply to some animal and to bring that in the market. But in urban development, it is so urgent that we have to apply some of the principles, some of the norms in the urban development. We do not have that much of time to experiment and then after becoming uh, assured, we, we cannot apply. So, our learning in urban sector is continuous and that is why to minimize the error, to minimize the wastage of the resources, it is very es essential uh, to learn from the earlier experiences, the past experiences, so that we do not make the uh, or do not repeat the, the similar error, similar mistakes in our job. So, objective of the learning from the experience is to reduce, reduce errors or mistakes and not to and not to repeat same errors okay and definitely provide bring better result better result than the earlier practice okay so if you see that experience which enables uh, uh, which enables us to reduce the errors mistakes not to repeat the same errors and to bring better result than the earlier experiences so that is the most important objective in studying from the experiences of the others and which is called as reflective learning so the please follow the term reflective it is like the when the practice is reflected reflected in others others learning and practice practice now you can call it as a motivation you can call it as a inspiration or you can call it as a as a follow but whatever you you say it is uh, the learning from the earlier and the past experiences so that's the reflective learning which is something very special and which is applicable for the yeah, the application oriented subject like urban development and urban governance where we are learning day to in a day to day basis and it is so fast changing world. But as a matter of fact, the, the number of documentation, number of the learning which is there in the public domain is very less. There are lot of good practices, best practices and the better learning which is there uh, within uh, some of the municipalities, some of the corners in the country, but maybe those are not documented. So, the objective of the reflective learning will be not only learning from the others experience also sometimes to share our experiences for the other learning. So, second is it is not only the reduce uh, errors and mistakes share our experience for other learning okay now how we can develop a, a, a environment of the reflective learning what could be the methods and the tools and how we can develop that whether the reflective learning mechanism is same with the classroom learning like we are continuing a uh, course in online platform can reflective learning could be a platform where online platform also emerges and online platform can be used for reflective learning let's see that what could be the platforms tools of the reflective learning. Now, first tool is that how we can develop a reflective learning is that you can develop it through the reading of documented cases. Now, there are number of documented cases of the similar um, um, examples in online platform and offline platform you can read from those cases those are effective tools for reflective learning. And in management the case method is a is an established method for the learning. So, case method 
is an established method. So, learning from the case is a very important learning which uh, in, in, the, in the principles of the management they use, but the, since I have told you that in urban development and urban governance the documented cases are very less, but there are uh, number of no documented cases in online platform you can go through that and also you can visit library to read the documented cases. So, number one is the um, documented cases. Second tool could be exposure visits. I have seen that in municipalities for the decision makers, for the people who are in administration uh, who deals with the policy and major decisions in the urban development, the exposure visits uh, um, acts fantastic. If you give them a training, if you send them for a uh, training, the classroom training to a uh, better institute like IITs. Uh, that could be effective, but it is much more than that effectiveness if you give them a better exposure visit where the similar experiences or similar practices has been done with better effectiveness. So, that will bring some kind of change of their mindset, change of their uh, perception, how they take and deal the, um, the urban uh, development. So, exposure visit uh, acts in those cases with a better effectiveness. Now, for exposure visits you have to be cautious that exposure visits should not be uh, converted into a tourism visit. Exposure visit should be planned meticulously, so that it can uh, attain the objective of visiting the, the important places where the best practices have already been done number one and number two that your team or the participants they learn and they share their experiences with the persons who dealt the earlier experiences or who dealt the earlier cases. So, exposure visit not only visiting the place, it is also visiting and interacting with the people concerned who have done a better, a better project or better case or better uh, practice. So, that is why exposure visit is another tool which you can use for continuous learning at your place. Third could be attend thematic symposium and conferences. Now, Symposium and conferences, there are no dearth of number of symposium and conferences and I tell you frankly that most of them are uh, mostly money oriented and, uh, and the, the amount of content or amount of knowledge input uh, could be less. So, please be careful and choosy in selecting thematic symposium and conferences if you want to attend some conference and symposium or you want to send your team to some uh, symposium and conferences. Okay, but yes, there are very good symposium and conferences that can um, can be used as a fantastic tools and methods by which you will come to know that what others are doing in other corners of the country and other corners of the world. So, symposium and conference is another tool for the reflective and the continuous learning. Next, the national exchange programs like national exchange meetings and programs. I have seen that where every every corner of the uh, states are represented and you get to know that the pe persons from uh, every state government, every district authorities or the urban local bodies they are coming and attending those national exchange meetings and exchange program. So, if you are getting sometime this opportunity to attend such a national um, uh, coordination meeting or national exchange meeting in any of the sector, it can be a road and transportation, it could be solid waste management, it could be a water supply, it could be a e-governance, any sector take this platform to interact with them. I personally have worked many times in a government sector for 10, 12 years in practice. So, that time I attended many such national exchange meetings and seminars and where I took that opportunity to interact with the other counterparts who is working in the Maharashtra, what is being done at the Mizoram, what is being done at the uh, far south in Kerala, in the Pondicherry, what is being done in the north in the Himachal Pradesh. So, that could be a very good learning opportunity. Do not take the do not treat that meeting as only the meeting, take the meeting or consider or treat the meeting as an opportunity to learning from your peers. Next is the you can also join uh, offline and online courses if the offline and online course give you some amount of uh, better direction for the future knowledge or the better cases. So, that is also possible that you can join online offline courses. So, some of the resources for the reflective, reflective learning is one is it could be a project report, completion report. Suppose you are managing a project or you are going to manage a project on the urban transportation, maybe construction of a flyover. So, you can you do not have to reinvent 
the project report of a of a flyover and you do not have to write from the first word definitely you can refer the earlier reports if it is not there in your urban local bodies you can refer the state level repository like the, um, the state urban development um, uh, agency or the state uh, training agency administrative training institutes the state libraries or you can visit the nearest university library where you will find similar project reports and the completion reports. Fr from there you will get some idea that how to write a project report, what are the critical factors, what could be the cost and what are the critical factors for the costing and what could be the design issues. So, you will get some idea. So, that will help you for uh, formulating your projects or formulating your action plan. Next could be the as I told earlier also the published papers and the case study. There are number of published paper on online platform and the case study while you search the public uh, the published paper please prefer your search from for example, Google scholar there are many other uh, online platform where you will get published paper from the renowned uh, um, publication house and some case studies from which you will get real data and real learning. Then third resources could be national repository. We have uh, national repository like national uh, libraries, we have number of thematic libraries at the state level at the national level and now we have significant amount of e-content in national websites. Significant amount of e-content which was not there to 20 years back when we graduated from the university or which when we started our work at the uh, urban sector at that time the amount of e-content was very less. But now with the click of the button you will get all the project reports, all the minutes of the meeting, all the documented case study, all the better practices, good practices nationally and internationally both. So, use the national repository and also I am adding the term international, use both the resources and yes e-resources as I told that e-content e is much more than the earlier time. So, use the e-resources um, uh, significantly, but judiciously. So, it is also very challenging that uh, since you have many e-resources, okay, so it is very difficult sometimes to manage the e-resources and to choose that which e-content is relevant for your case. So, one quick um, uh, tip is that before reading the e-resources or e-content, you can read the summary, you can understand whether that particular e-content or the case or the experience is relevant for your case or not, then you can read the whole thing. So, that is how you can definitely develop a practice of the reflective learning and you can develop upon that. Now, I um, tell you some initiative by the government of India in 2007, government of India after considering the need for the reflective learning and the continuous learning in the urban sector, they started an initiative called peer exchange, peer exchange and reflective learning, um, learning program and uh, this is coordinated by National Institute of Urban Affairs uh, NIEA. The link is given here, you can go this link, go to this link and you can study various resource material. Now, I just give you a little bit of background of this when in 2004, the JNNURM program came, it was the first flagship program which uh, conceptualized a comprehensive planning mechanism reform based urban development agenda in India and which has some commonalities between across the states and across the cities. So, government of India at that time, they, they thought that to bring the excellence, to bring the better practices, why not we share the practices of the uh, state governments or the cities which are uh, doing well. And from that background, they started this PARL program. And the PARL program has lot of cases documented. I am just showing you few lines from them, like this is one compendium of good practices on urban heritage in the Indian cities. I just show you some screenshots. So, you can see the, the best practices in the urban conservation in the world city of Ahmedabad, uh, the um, legislative best practice in the Hyderabad, in the city of Jaipur, Mumbai, then there are various others area like Pondicherry, then New Delhi and the West Bengal and again Jaipur. So, you can go through all these documents, I will share the link further link and you can study that which could be uh, relevant for your case. The case studies have been earmarked for the legislation, for the mapping and the technical input, for the uh, public participation. So, there are various categories on which the case studies or the better cases are documented. Next, 
uh, under this pearl program they have documented the compendium of good practices in urban solid waste management in indian cities i know that uh, that you have already been um, uh, aware about the Swachh Bharat Abhijan we have discussed in one lecture also about the solid waste management. Now it has been uh, almost one decade that we have been discussing the solid waste management gr um, greatly which we did not do earlier time in that way. And some of the cities they have really done very good job in terms of their uh, collection efficiency, some of the municipalities they have done better job in terms of uh, governance mechanism and a self sufficient. Uh, mechanism some of the municipalities they have done like they have uh, they, they could really bring some kind of revenue out of the waste they could uh, generate energy also for example chennai so there are a lot of similar type of examples i show you one screenshots so you can see that this is the initiative of the pune in the city of pune where they have done a ppp project public private partnership project with one um, cooperative called swatch like this and there are programs in Vrindavan and uh, in Mumbai, Greater Mumbai, Chennai, Srinagar and then Ahmedabad and so on, Gangtok, Warangal. So, various uh, good practices are uh, mentioned in this compendium. So, please go through the compendium and try to uh, identify your relevant case and study that. And in our examination also some of the uh, case studies could be referred and I will share the uh, the cases and the links in your reading material. Next they have also, um, also published the urban transportation in Indian cities. Uh, you know that urban transportation and the accessibility is one of the major thrust area we have dealt the subject in earlier lectures. Now, some of the uh, focused area is that uh, how they are doing good practices, practices in the rickshaws and the non motorized transportation, then traffic control system then uh, traffic improvement project there are uh, projects like in alwar through the alwar vahini it's a intermediate public transport and then there are projects like bus shelters so a lot of projects are uh, are listed in this compendium please uh, go through all the the whole compendium and you can read so urban transportation and uh, and uh, and transport and accessibility is one area where every day there are some changes now the practices which were uh, called as the best practices or the better practices in 10 years back those could be a normal standard practice for all the local bodies. So, it is not a eternal best practice or eternal case study. So, if you get some idea some clue you can apply that and definitely you have to you have to, you have to try uh, to improve upon that improve on that. So, that is the major message from this discussion. Next is that urban water supply and a sanitation in Indian cities here also there are lot of uh, good practices. I show you some screenshots in Nagpur through some PPP project, Surat formation of a dedicated cell for the water supply, Pimpri Chinchar, uh, local bodies, Bangalore, then Jalandhar, then Trichy, Nanded, all these municipalities, Nagpur, they have done good works in the water supply and, and sanitation. So, you can also refer this compendium. Now, now, after this I hope that you got at least the message that yes continuous learning is essential, it is not a additional um, feather which is required for you for the promotion and everything. It is the essential part of your work or the practice in the urban governance and management for survival of you as an individual for your job and then your organization. I have seen even many small municipalities with a small team of dedicated uh, uh, dedicated technical persons who are really doing well in the urban development through this continuous learning and now they have established uh, their foot and they have their, their municipalities are doing very well and some of the municipalities are listed here. But I hope that this is only tip of the ice there are many good practice in various corners of the country uh, and one could be at your municipalities or your organization. So, having said that I come to uh, the last part that what could be your role in this continuous learning and reflective learning. Now, one part is important here that document your practices whatever you are doing at your uh, work areas please make an habit of documenting the practice and the process how you are dealing the case and how you are solving the problem, how you are taking the decision, what are the critical problems and what was the earlier situation and what is the present situation. Now, one relevant question from this documentation is that 
is it really possible with the limited time frame, limited manpower in the uh, urban local bodies or the development authority? I must say yes, it is possible. Uh, documentation and practices, it is not a different job. It is the job of a, uh, it is the integrated part of any job if you make a habit of that uh, and if you develop a system and process, earlier we discussed system and process, if you develop that it does not take much time, much cost and much manpower. So, it is possible and later on it will uh, bring definitely uh, the helpful references to you only. I have seen in municipalities that documented projects, uh, the, the documented cases are not available because we do not document it. Once the project is done, we forget it and we jump for the next project, but there should be some e-repository or some offline repository so that this documentation are available. Second is please expose and be exposed. Okay? So, through symposium, seminars, field visit as I told all these resources we discussed. So, take initiative to be exposed and take initi initiative to expose your team member so that as a team we grow mutually. Then increase the knowledge wealth. I told you that in 21st century it is the knowledge poverty which is going to govern the urban sector. So, please make a wealth of knowledge. It is not the money. Money is available nowadays for the urban development. Everybody is willing to provide money. The private sector, the international agency, national agency, state agency, because you might have seen the, po the political and the social paradigm and the structure is so that the urban development definitely brings the attention of the people, urban development brings the focus of the people. That is why now there is no dearth of as such money, but the knowledge uh, matters and the poor knowledge um, uh, brings uh, the, the bad project and not so uh, good outcome. So, please uh, build upon your knowledge. So, you have to build upon your knowledge wealth so that you can do better project and once the knowledge wealth is, 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 is developed, you can you can share that knowledge with your neighboring municipalities to the national forum, to the international forum possible and through that you can bring the fame, you can bring the image, you can bring the even sometimes financial resources to your municipality. Then contribute for the citizens. Now, why? Now, what is the, what is the difference between the contribution and the regular job? Contribution is that something which is written in your in your job letter, maybe in your job letter it is written that you have to perform some particular duty. But the continuous development, continuous uh, grow, growth in terms of knowledge and skills it may not be written. So, if you develop that uh, and if you apply and bring that knowledge for the betterment of the citizens, it will be your contribution for the citizens and for the country people. And this contribution will not only help the citizens and the organization, it will give you an enjoyment for the self-fulfillment which sometimes not available through uh, other means. So, self-fulfillment um, uh, and the enjoyment is also possible by bringing new knowledge, by bringing the future direction of the country or the municipalities which is possible. B uh, in some lectures, we have discussed about the time and stress management. So, this self-fulfillment through the continuous growth, through the reflective learning is possible. That is the message what I can give you right now through the reflective learning. So, having said that, I conclude today's lecture. Today we have discussed the essence of the, uh, the continuous learning and reflective learning as a the finest tool of continuous learning. And what is reflective learning? Reflective learning is the learning from the similar practices, similar experiences from the others and also sharing my experiences, sharing our experiences to the other people so that people uh, get learning and they can apply suitably. And in reflective learning, we have told you that there are various methods and tools, methods and tools like exposure visits, uh, then learning from the online platform, learning from the, uh, the meetings, the national um, exchange meetings, all this and there are resources I have mentioned. I have mentioned about the, the PARL program by government of India. In the PARL program, you will find several cases are documented in various sectors. Some of the screenshots I have shown. And then uh, after that, we, we have discussed that your role, your role will be, should be proactive by documenting your process and the practice, exposing the, uh, the, exp uh, the experience and being exposed to the better experiences, increasing the knowledge wealth so that you do not end up in knowledge uh, poverty in some time of your career, of your life and you can build upon this to bring fame to being, 
brand image to the uh, to the urban local bodies and also to contribute to the citizens uh, um, of your urban local bodies so that you also get uh, some amount of personal fulfillment personal enjoyment through the course of this action having said that uh, i conclude this uh, lecture uh, we have one only one lecture remaining in the last lecture we will not discuss any specific topics but we will uh, make a overall summary some doubt clearing and will give some references for the further reading so with this i conclude and end this lecture thank you very much